What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. It's time for a yet another Kaiju number eight chapter review. This time we're going to be picking up with chapter 74. Since I skipped all of last week, I think I may do my reviews for Kaiju number eight on a bi weekly release schedule. I don't know yet, but last week's chapter was hype and it was the precursor to this week's chapter. So let's get into chapter 74. We are picking up right when Hoshina and number 10 are going through it. First of all, I love the fact that when I bring up Hoshina, I now have to, by association, mention number 10. I think the dynamics between the two are going to be hilarious if last chapter is anything to go by. W decision by the writer Matsumoto to make a numbers weapon 10 a talking suit. Kinda like how Tony Stark had Jarvis, but I digress. These mantis type kaiju have been keeping their boot on Hoshina's neck and they haven't been giving him a chance to reorganize his strategy using number 10 because all last chapter they've been going absolute ham on them and I got a laugh out of that one mantis kaiju that literally tried to powerbomb Hoshina with a plane. That was wild and so freaking funny. Also, I like the correlation with the Mantis Kaiju that are super fast and are all about getting ahead of their opponents and cutting them up. And Hoshina being that guy that likes to close the gap using speed, overwhelming his opponent with quick swordplay. It is such a perfect matchup for Hoshina. At first, we thought that him and Kaiju number 10 just weren't going to get along during the fight, but things seem to be turning around this chapter and we really get to see just how cunning and manipulative Hoshina can be. Hoshina throws number 10 a bone and decides to let him seemingly call the shots for a bit during the fight, and they manage to get their release force up to 56%, their highest yet. They then, under the guidance of 10, rush in for a frontal assault on the Mantis Kaiju. During this, we also get to learn a bit more about number 10 and his disposition and that he enjoys battles where he's faced with a complete disadvantage. Now we've seen this archetype with other characters in other manga, most notably Kenpachi Zaraki from Bleach. Number 10 lives only for the fight and to prove that he is the strongest, which is probably why he appears to be fine with helping out in the fight against number nine. Number 10 is also very prideful, so if faced with an overwhelming force, he sees no other option than to meet that force head on and overpower it. Hoshina being the boss that he is, taps into this and begins to manipulate number 10 into believing that he is bending the knee to every decision that he makes. And every time number 10 looks to Hoshina for approval, Hoshina is like, listen, what you did was just alright man, I thought you were supposed to be better than this, but I guess this is all the mighty number 10 is capable of. And you can see where Hoshina's ambivalence towards all of number 10's feats kind of irritates number 10 and then inadvertently makes number 10 fall in line with what Hoshina actually wants him to do. So after slicing up multiple kaiju into chunks, Hoshina decides to stop moving and tells number 10 that he's gonna fend off the next incoming attack on his own, once again manipulating number 10's ego. So 10 accepts the challenge and we get another display of black air force activity from our boy Hoshina as he just stands there with his arms crossed while two kaiju pull up behind him. And he just lets number 10 take them all out on his own using the tail as a weapon. This has to be one of the coolest things I have seen in a minute. But shh, he can't tell number 10 that cause at this point, number 10 is working for Hoshina. And when he looks to Hoshina for his approval again, Hoshina is like, look bro, you are supposed to be numbers weapon 10, not numbers weapon suck, because all of these shards are hitting me. After you cut those fools to shreds, we are currently at 60% release force and you still can't stop these shards from hitting me? You can't stop these attacks completely, bro? And he calls number 10 a letdown. I ain't gonna lie, that's pretty savage. And number 10, now being the lap dog that he is, doesn't even catch on to what Hoshina is doing. Man, the interactions are so funny. So Hoshina and number 10 peep the Mantis Kaiju boss just chilling in the back. Honestly, after witnessing all of my homies get dusted like that, I'd be in the back too. 
Oshina in number 10 decides to cut a path straight through a mob of kaiju to reach it. During this whole fight, Hoshina in number 10's synchronization just keeps elevating, now reaching 77% release force. While number 10 wards off attacks from behind Hoshina, this allows him to focus on using his Hoshina style sword slay techniques. And let me say this now, please let kaiju number 8 get an amazing animation studio because this will definitely be one of the top three fight sequences of the year when this chapter is animated. Every time Hoshina uses a sword technique, number 10 follows up with his own. And just like the dog that number 10 now is, he gets annoyed whenever his master ignores him. But yo, that panel where all of the kaiju jump behind Hoshina while he's walking and number 10 is just slicing and dicing, that is a legendary panel. So much so that I have got to give this chapter a 10 if I had to rate it and it's not even finished yet. I love how Hoshina makes a reference to him being the blade that will cut a path to Commander Ashiro except this time he's remarking that it feels weird for someone else to be cutting that path through the battlefield for him. Right before he launches Hoshina style sword slay technique number 6, the eightfold slasher. The same technique that he used to nearly cripple number 10 during their last fight. As already stated, this chapter is a whole 10. Normally, I would have given it a 9, but I boosted it up to a 10 because I thought the paneling here was great. And sometimes fights in manga can be a bit hard to follow, but not with this chapter. I could clearly see and visualize every movement Hoshina and number 10 were making. So it made reading this chapter so much better for me. So to wrap this up, I'd imagine that the next chapter will move towards the next numbers suit user. The only one remaining is currently Reno. So I'd expect to also see Furuhashi since him and Reno seem to be a package deal these days. Anyway, that'll be all. If you made it this far, then thanks for watching the whole video. And if you like this type of content, then hit the thumbs up, consider subscribing, click the bell so that you never miss an upload. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. God bless. Peace.